um, about seven months in tremendous amounts of pain when I herniated two discs in my back, one on the top and one on the bottom. It would take me 45 minutes to get out of bed in the morning. So I lived this every single day. I would literally have to wake up and say, okay, left big toe, wiggle, other toes, wiggle, ankle, knee, hip. Okay, start with the right foot. It would take me 45 minutes to get out of bed. So I've walked this journey, okay, and praise the Lord, I'm, I'm walking. Okay, no back surgery, but God bless chiropractic. Okay, because without it, I would be walking. Now, here's what I mean. Those things that we do over and over and over again, every single day of our life, we refer to those by a lot of different terms. I'm just going to use the word habit. Now, I'm not talking about that thing nuns wear. Okay, I'm talking about those things we do every day without even thinking about it. Right? We got, and I, I was watching some of your eating habits. <laughs> okay? Because you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pick on you. You can relax. Um, and we're gonna talk about your spilling your root beer, which I'm not sure was actually root beer, Julia, at all. We've cut her off. Safe. Okay? We all have little things that we do, right? Like right now, Steve. You're sitting there with your right leg over your left. And yet a few minutes ago you weren't. Yeah. Why'd you do that? I got tired of it. Got tired of your leg? I got tired of sitting like that. Got tired of sitting that way. So you wanted to change. Now, um, George, Pete, you've been sitting like that for a while. Can you still feel your feet? Yeah. <laughs> because when I do that, I can't feel your feet. <laughs> Okay? And if I drive down the road, I can't feel my own feet after a while. It begins the problem with my back. So it's already manifested some things. I have to stop more frequently. Ladies, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Drive with the guys who never stop. Right? Let me give you one more example of the iceberg. You ever driven down the road? Now, this is probably for the guys. You ever driven down the road and woke up at your destination? Let him leave first. I'm the driver. You know, you kind of, you kind of driving, especially on like on a highway, and you suddenly wake up and there's your exit. You were never actually asleep. You just kind of check out. That's actually the first stage of hypnosis when you do that. So how is it you can drive down the road and not kill yourself or anybody else? Because what happens is your habits take over. Yes, ma'am. I was going to say that. Okay. And so this is really, really important because as people fighting diseases or supporting those that fighting diseases, the first thing you've got to recognize is your world is different when you're fighting an ailment, isn't it? And the things that used to be, yeah, no big deal, suddenly become a big deal. They suddenly become meaningful little things that prior to this problem ever happening, it really wasn't a big deal. And this is crucial. Now, for many of us, we grew up and our parents forced us to develop habits. How many know what I'm talking about? And then you left home and you decided you didn't like them habits anymore and you formed your own. Julia even always carries one of hers with her. <laughs> Right? And I, I developed one of those habits too that I didn't do at home when I was a kid either. Okay? And this, this scenario, this example, this story from my life forms the frame, formed, and I didn't know it at the time, formed the framework for what I'm talking about. Now, the date was uh, January 21st, 1991. It was cold, it was about 15 degrees. So it was cold. It was in Michigan, so it was really cold. <laughs> okay? And it was about like this weather, only it was colder. Okay? Like the freezing rain was going on. You know, you can actually have freezing rain at 15 degrees. It doesn't always have to be snow. In fact, it's worse when it's freezing rain at 15 than it is when it's freezing rain at 35. Because it freezes like that. And at approximately, and I say approximately because I really had no idea, this was 1981, before really cell phones were all the rage. I mean, you could have one, but you know, it was the size of a shoebox. 
1991, and only Charlie's Angels had them on TV. Nobody else. Had. Remember those? Yeah. Bosley picking up the shoebox phone, you know. And so I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't wear a watch. So it was roughly three o'clock in the morning, and I'm walking along the side of the road, and it starts to rain. This freezing rain in 15 degrees, and I suddenly stopped walking because I suddenly realized that I was in a freezing rainstorm in the middle of the night on a country road with no car, no coat, and no clue as to where I was and what direction was north, south, east, or west, or how I had gotten there. The last thing I remember was being at that company sponsored event at the local drinking hole approximately six hours ago. But it was three o'clock in the morning and I'm on the side of a road with no car, no coat, and no clue in a freezing rainstorm. What would you have done? Pray. Yeah, see, I didn't know God then, didn't think to pray, didn't even think to ask, didn't, never even crossed my consciousness. I just kind of said, well, I guess the only thing I can do is grip my arms like this and walk. And hope that I was walking in the right direction. And approximately, again, approximately, because I don't have a clock, approximately two hours later, through sheer force of will, I arrived at my buddy's house. Somehow I had sobered up by this point, you know. It's like a cold shower and then some. And when I arrived at my buddy's house, I had ice on my head. I had ice literally down my arms. My coat was frozen. I couldn't undo my arms. And I had icicles hanging off my elbows. And he, it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm kicking his front door because I can't move my arms or stuff together. And you know, it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and someone's kicking on your door. You're not exactly pleasant. <laughs> What? As he opens the door and he takes one look at me and he grabs me and I, all I really remember is as he grabbed me and gripped my arms I heard crackling <laughs> as all the ice broke and he, dra he didn't even ask what was going on, didn't ask if I'd been in an accident, didn't ask nothing, just grabbed me and threw me in the shower and thankfully turned the cold water on because if he turned the warm water on he would have killed me. And I sat there in that shower for about 45 minutes thinking, as my brain thought out, about how did this happen? How did I get in the situation? How did I put, I'm a pretty smart guy. This is what I'm thinking at the time. Circumstances, you know, indicating else. <laughs> but I'm a smart guy. How did I end up here? How did I end up in this situation? And the more I thought, the more I thought, the more I thought, it finally came to me over the course of a, the next several weeks. It took that long for me to really flesh all of this out, but it came to me this way. And I have, over the course of the last several years, not spoken a whole lot about this, but back in the late 90s, uh, I was a professional speaker, and I traveled the country doing workshops and seminars, and got paid pretty good for it. It was a good life uh, in the, in the mid-90s there. And I developed this. And uh, it is kind of what I'm leaving you with today. As Russell said, I had to be done by six, so we're just getting into this. <laughs> yeah. okay. We got a lot of food, though, because we got dinner covered. <laughs> I didn't realize it initially, but what I discovered was it was the, the three step method for all change. Change brought on by disease and circumstances outside of ourselves, as well as change that we might want to institute inside ourselves. And it's called awareness, acceptance, and action. Here's what I mean. How many here are married to somebody that has a problem and they don't know anything about it? <laughs> Let me ask the question you can answer. How many used to be married to somebody that had a problem that they were completely unaware of? <laughs> Right? Now, they were probably smart people because they married you. Right? So we know they were intelligent. So what was the issue? They were just not aware. See, I didn't know I had a drinking problem. Well, I didn't want to know I had a drinking problem. But I discovered, looking back, that when you're drinking five nights a week to the point of inebriation, you have a drinking problem. 
Okay? And I would love to tell you that I found God that night. I did, and I wasn't that smart. I figured all this out without him. Okay? If you don't know you have a problem, how can you fix it? Some of you lived with your disease for a while like that, didn't you? Didn't even know you had a problem. You knew something's wrong, but you can't really put your finger on it, and I don't want to go to the doctor. You know, us men were terrible about that. Man, we got stuff growing out of our back. It'll fall off. <laughs> what do you know what I'm talking about, ladies? We don't like them doctors, okay? I went to the doctor the first time in 23 years, then spent the next six days in bed because I got something at his doctor's office. Do you think I'm going back anytime soon? No. Probably not. First time in 23 years. Never missed a day of work in 23 years. Never went to the doctor. I go to the doctor for a physical because one of the guys in my office, 49 years old, dies of a heart attack. 49 years old, dies of a heart attack. And, my, and I came home and told my wife, and she said, and what day next week is your doctor? And I still love my wife. So I said, I'm going. So I went to the doctor and then spent six days in bed because I got something when I was there. <laughs> but by the way, my heart was good. But see, until awareness is achieved, nothing happens. See, in my case, I had a problem. Any of you deal with your husband not putting the seat down? Go ahead and raise your hand, Donald. Be proud. You're sitting right here. Well, again, it's silly and it's, it's small. That's why I use it because I don't want to really talk about the big stuff. Okay, I will talk about the big stuff. This um, older couple goes 50 years. You guys are coming up. Well, I'm going to sit on another one. That's awesome. I know this is not you because of the way you spoke about your wife. I know this is not you, but this couple's been married for 50 years. She can't take it on their 50th one. She breaks down in tears. She says, we have to go to marriage counseling. And he's looking at her like something's wrong with her. He says, we've been married 50 years since our anniversary. What do you mean? We have to go to counseling. She says, we have to go to counseling, please. <laughs> so as his anniversary present, he says, fine, let's go to counseling. They walk in, and he's just sitting there. You know, you know how he's sitting there, right, at the counselor's office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he ate a bad fruit or something. <laughs> And so the counselor looks at him and looks at her, and she's all ready to go. And he says, well, you know, uh, Mrs. Smith, why don't, you start? why don't you start? And she says, well, he just, he never tells me he loves me. <laughs> and she starts crying. And the husband comes out of his prune-like state, and he looks at his wife with great shock, and he said, I told you on the day I loved you, on the day we were married, if anything changes, I will let you know. <laughs> right now know that there's something in your life that's a problem that you're not addressing. You don't have to tell me what it is, but you know there's something in your life that you just, mm -hmm. you know, it's Christmas time. What's that mean? Family coming to town. Oh my God. It's Christmas time. Okay. And before they come, remember, we're not going to talk about this and we're not going to talk about it. And we are not going to bring up 1973. 